Hey everyone, it's M10. Before I jump into this video, I just want to say thank you so much for 80,000 subscribers. That is an absolutely amazing milestone. But over 90% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So if you want to see more content like this and you want to support the channel in a free and easy way that supports the channel heaps, make sure to smash that subscribe button. My goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if we could achieve that goal, that would be absolutely amazing. Anyway, let's jump into the video. Hello everyone, what's going on? It is M10 here. Welcome back to another Terraria guide video and in today's video we are going to be discussing every single trap in Terraria 1.4 Journey's End. So according to the wiki there are three different types of traps in the game. There are reusable traps, single use traps and structures. Some of these traps are completely natural and you will not be able to recreate them yourself whereas others you can pick up and reuse or create and craft yourself. So I've made a little structure here displaying a whole bunch of traps and I'm going to showcase them all to you before showing you all where to find some in your own world. For testing purpose when I'm showcasing damage to player I will be using normal mode and removing any armor. The only accessory that will increase my defense that I will be using is the Ankh Shield, so I should be hovering around for defense for most of this video. So most of these traps can be activated using wire, pressure plates, switches, etc, etc, except for the spikes. And a good way to tell if you're about to set off a trap underground is by using the grand design or a wrench to see where any wire is laying around. Okay, so the first set of traps we're going to be covering are lizard traps, and you can get these or find these and be attacked by these in the Lizard Temple. This one here is the Spear Trap. When you stand on a pressure plate, a spear will fall down. And if you get hit by it, it deals a hefty amount of damage. The spear will attack both players and mobs. It will be blocked when it comes in contact with a solid. And like all the other Lizard Traps, it can be hammered to change its direction. Now we can see the spiky ball trap, which when activated shoots out a spiky ball which bounces around and then eventually will end up lying on the ground. And it deals quite a lot of damage to the player when it uh, hits you. That can be when it is being shot out or even when lying around on the ground and you come into contact with it. So keep an eye out for this one. So the next two traps are the flame trap and the super dart trap. We can see it damaging a hoplite here. The flame trap sends out a burst similar to a flamethrower for a couple of seconds. The super dart trap sends out a dart, a fast paced dart that attacks both enemies and players, but it is far more powerful than your regular dart trap. Something also to note with this setup is of course the statue trap where you can activate a statue to spawn a mob. Now this is something that you will commonly find underground where you step on a pressure plate and a mob will spawn, so keep an eye out for that trap as well. Okay, here we have the classic dart trap found very commonly underground. Doesn't deal anywhere near as much damage as the lizard traps and it doesn't go through blocks or anything like that, but it is a classic trap for pre-hard mode and can deal quite a heavy amount of damage to a player without defense uh, as well as a poison debuff and especially if you're in master mode this thing can deal upwards of 100 damage if you don't have life crystals it'll even one shot you up next we have the landmine which can damage both players and enemies that step on it you buy it from the demolitionist and as you can see it deals a lot of damage but not to blocks just to players and mobs Next up we have the geyser trap which can be found in the cave biome underground and something interesting about this trap is it can go through a layer of blocks as you can see there it shoots out a beam of fire but only through the first set of blocks it gets blocked by a second set of blocks as you can see it takes out enemies as well as damaging a player this is how high the fire beam goes without any uh, blocks blocking it so as you can see, it stretches quite far and it deals pretty consistent damage as well. It's sort of like a pre-hard mode equivalent to the flame trap. 
So another natural spawning way of setting off traps is this detonator here. Usually you'll find this next to an explosive with a pile of ore. We can test this setting off a dart trap here. And there are two ways to set off a detonator. The first off is by right clicking on it. It will act like a switch or a pressure plate. The other way is to step on it. It will set off the, uh, the trap. As you can see, it seems to be some kind of pressure based system. Uh, so make sure to avoid stepping on these things because you'll most likely be met with an explosive. Here we have two different types of spikes. On the right we have dungeon spikes that have been buffed in 1.4 to deal more damage I believe. And on the left we have lizard spikes which are found in the lizard temple. Something to note about the dungeon spikes is that in 1.4 spike trap pits were added. So how these work is we can see that there are new breakable bricks in the dungeon and when you try and break one they will all fall away but these have been used to create false floors which disappear when the player steps on them so you have to be careful because they will lead to a pit of spikes underneath and if the player does not have a grappling hook or wings or rocket boots when traversing the dungeon you can very easily fall into these traps and get stuck the dungeon bricks that break have a slightly more crumbly texture in comparison to regular ones so they are noticeable but you have to be careful and stay vigilant in the dungeon here we have the boulder trap boulders can be found underground they are single use so you can't pick them up uh, especially since they can be broken but you can craft them for six stone at a tinkerer's workshop they can be activated by two ways one by breaking them with a pickaxe which will send them rolling off or alternatively set off by wiring via switch or pressure plate so you'll find them activated by pressure plates underground and they will usually fall on the player so be careful for these finally we have the explosive trap these can be crafted with three dynamite or you can find them naturally spawning underground usually at the other end of a detonator or a pressure plate as you can see they break a lot of blocks and deal a lot of damage to a player if they get caught in the path of one. So keep a very close eye out for these because it'll probably mean the end of your mining run. Now that we've covered all of the traps in my little setup here, I'm going to show how some appear in various biomes around the map. Okay, our first single use naturally spawning trap is the beehive. When this is broken by a weapon or a pickaxe, it spawns bees that'll fly out and target the player and deal lots of damage to them and they have to be killed by a weapon. Uh, beehives will also disappear if they come in contact with water. Another trap found in the underground jungle is the jungle thorns. These disappear on impact but also damage the player on impact. There are other biome equivalents in the Corruption and Crimson. Moving on to the underground desert, it is a treasure trove of disgusting traps that have been included in the 1.4 Journey's End update. The desert's equivalent to the beehives are the antlion larvae mounds, which when broken by a pickaxe or I believe weapon as well, spawn antlion larvae that will target you. These are feisty little creatures that you don't want to come in contact with either. The desert also has cactus boulders which are even more deadly because they damage the player on impact through the spikes and when broken they will damage the player if they roll on you but when the boulder is broken they also shoot out spikes so it's a bit of a triple whammy in regards to how many trap effects it has on the player so make sure to avoid these and break them before you come into contact with them. But that's not all in the underground desert. We have the falling sand trap as well because uh, clearly there weren't enough traps added to this place. A good way to spot these traps is have the grand design or wrench active and keep an eye out for actuators that are just hovering above a open surface. Also another thing to look out for if you don't have the wrench or grand design is just a large cubic area of sand because it'll fall on you if you stand on the pressure plate underneath and this will deal a lot of damage on impacts but also sand will suffocate you very quickly so keep an eye out for this trap because it'll most likely be a downfall unless you're quick enough to escape it once it hits the ground here we can see a dead man's chest this is a bait chest which is surrounded by traps underground so that when you right click and open it 
it will set off the traps. If you do come across one of these, be very careful to remove all the traps before opening up the chest because there will still be loot inside, but it will most likely lead to your death if you are not careful. The final trap I am going to showcase in this video is the lava trap. I didn't even know this one existed until several viewers pointed it out to me, but recently there are lava drain traps which can be set off by a pressure plate and these have been added in the Terraria 1.4 update. Basically, as mentioned, there is a thin row of actuators that are above a pressure plate and when you step on the pressure plate, lava will leak through the actuated blocks. Uh, the pressure plate disappears so you can't reactuate them and the lava will fill up whatever area you are in. This is pretty easy to escape if you have any movement accessories, but keep an eye out for it if you don't want lava to end up in your elevator or something like that. On a final note, I will talk about cobwebs quickly because they will appear uh, on a danger sense potion. They will slow movement. That is the only effect. They do not damage you, so I don't really consider them a trap, but some people would. So here they are. Cobwebs will slow the player down. Well, that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you learned something or found this video enjoyable. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content coming soon. If you made it to the end of this video, comment treasure bag down below so that I know you've made it to the end. I'll be replying to comments down in the comment section, so make sure to leave one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, like I said, and I will see you all in the next Terraria video. Goodbye.